Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through life cycle of Java Servlet, guys. Okay, guys, few of you might be having a doubt that what is the extension of Servlet? Like if I write a code for Servlet, what could be the extension? So basically, the extension of this is nothing but Java, guys. Dot Java. So it is a just a simple Java program in which you will be embedding or which in which you will be writing the HTML code also. Okay, guys, we'll be discussing about with some examples in our next lecture. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, so in this lecture, let us go through life cycle of Java servlet. So how you will be starting it, how you will be initializing it, and how you will be serving it, and what internally happens because we will be not writing for all these things. These are predefined or pre-written for us. Okay, okay, okay. So life cycle of Java servlet. The entire life cycle of servlet is managed by servlet container so basically this servlet container is nothing but your jvm guys your java virtual machine is nothing but your jvm on which you will be running your java code right so that object is going to help here that container is going to help here which uses this is the package names and all those things guys you can just check them if you want so java x dot servlet dot servlet here s is small and here s is capital in that interface you can find this guys to understand the servlet object and manage it so basically you need to import this first to do the whole process okay so in normal words we will be directly importing the whole servlet package so java x dot servlet small s star dot star we will be importing the whole thing so that will be easy for us okay so stage stages of servlet we are having five different stages guys few might be saying there are only three stages but commonly most of the textbooks and most of the websites follow five stages okay so the first stage five stages are servlet class is loaded so first thing is to load the class then the next thing is to create an instance for that class after that you will be initializing the method using initialize method initializing is nothing but you will be starting your process like that you can say and service is nothing but you will be starting your process and executing you will be starting executing your work after that at the end once it is done you will be destroying it simple right yes so a simple flowchart for this will be in this way guys so the first step or first node will be nothing but loading the servlet, creating and calling the initialization method. So now it is ready to use. So once it is ready, you can call it. You can call the services and you can start your service works or all those things. And once everything is done, you can directly delete the servlet. Right? Yes. So remember one thing, guys. So if you create or initialize a servlet once successfully, you can use it until you destroy it, guys. There is no time limit that you can use for a day or two like that. Okay. So you can use until you destroy it okay okay but only on a successful creation and until you turn off your system and all those things okay okay so now let us go through the flow even there is one more flow chart which i found in the internet guys okay so first initially you can you will be creating it okay so after that you'll be initializing it so you can if can you say that every time initialization will be successful no there might be a failure so when there is a failure you need to unload it first okay okay assume that it is a success now and then you will be checking for the availability whether the service is available or not if it is available you'll be starting your request and you'll be completing it and then you'll be destroying it if not the request is not available if unavailable for service then you'll be destroying it and you'll be unloading it similarly even while you're completing your own requests in between there could be some issue so in that time there is an exception happened then you will be moving on to unavailable for service destroyed and un unload okay so the process the end will be the destroying only guys okay okay so if once you reached here you can continuously request for whatever you want and you can collect the services there will be no issue in that okay okay so let us go through some kind of points for each and every step guys okay so loading servlet class so the first stage of servlet life cycle is to invoke the loading and initialization initialization is the next step third step guys okay the servlet by the servlet container servlet container is nothing but jvm so when the first request for the servlet is required by the web browser container servlet loads it so basically you can assume that in this way guys so if the container is empty without any servlet if you request it will be creating it initializing it and doing it so if already it is there it will not follow the first steps guys it will automatically use it directly so you can assume that that has a, some kind of uh, key or some kind of thing if it is available you can use it if it is not available you should first generate it okay in that way okay so the second step is nothing but servlet instance is created so the web container creates the instance of a servlet after loading the servlet class so now it will be creating an instance of that particular class 
okay so the servlet instance is created only once in the life cycle so this is the step i told you right you can do it once and you can use it multiple times so once it is installed or once the instance is created you can use it for multiple times okay then in it in it in simple you can say that it is nothing but initialization guys okay so the init method is used to initialize the servlet so it is the life cycle method of okay so you can find that method in the same package which we discussed first okay so it will be in this way in it with some configuration info okay similarly service method service mo service method guys okay so service method is nothing but this is a function which this is a function or a method which completes your particular task right so to complete that task you need to have the servlet right so the container should have the servlet first if it is not there who how can it continue so the first thing is nothing but if it is there if it is not there you need to create it if it is there you can use it okay so the web container calls the service method each time when a request for the servlet is received so whenever someone request for the servlet or anything if it is available you will be using it if not you will be generating it so that's what i have written in the next steps if a servlet is not initialized the first three steps are done then it come back to the service model similarly service method similarly else if it is already available you will be directly using it so the syntax will be in this way servlet request and response what is are you requesting and what are you getting as a response okay okay similarly destroy so destroy from the name itself you can say here you are deallocating the memory or the space or the threads right yes so before removing the servlet instance from the ser service it is given a particular servlet some kind of time or an opportunity to clean up anything of anything resources any type of resources which are left or saved for that particular task okay so like memory threads okay so the function will be in this way guys you can just call destroy and it will be destroyed simple right yes so if you want a small architecture diagram it is in this way guys okay so inside jvm you will be having this servlet container okay so the so the server will be sending some kind of requests based on that based on that threads are created and these threads are experimented with these three functions or these three methods you can say initialization service once it is everything is done you can destroy it okay so this is the architecture diagram and this is all about servlet architecture sorry servlet life cycle guys okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea about it so in the next lecture we will be going through some examples guys okay so we'll be going through some examples so that be clear for you okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching